In the last video, we learned how to load programs onto a Kim1 single board computer from tape. In this video, we're going to learn how to connect a terminal to a Kim1 single board computer. The reason you want to do this, instead of just using the tiny little keypad for input and the LEDs for output, you get a full video output and a full keyboard for input. So, no fluff, no filler, let's go get started. What you will need to make this happen really depends on exactly which computer you're going to be connecting from. Uh, I'm going to be connecting from a VIC-20 first, so we'll talk about that. The things you will need for the VIC-20 are obviously a Kim-1 single board computer, which I think goes without saying. The Corsham I.O. board is what I'm going to use. You can do it without that, but I'm not going to cover that here. You will need a VIC-1011A RS-232 user port cartridge for the VIC-20. Uh, there are other ones other than the VIC-1011A. This is the one I happen to have. And finally, you're going to need a serial connector. Uh, DB25 on one end, DB9 on the other end. I didn't have a cable that went DB25 to DB9, so I'm using this adapter and this gender changer. So that's everything we need. Let's make it happen. Porsche MyO board here connected to the application connector on the Kim 1. You'll notice that it's a switch down here, SW2. You can choose between either keyboard or TTY. We're connecting a terminal through RS-232, so we want it to be on the TTY setting. Once you have everything connected and powered on, the only other thing we're going to need is a terminal program. So Commodore sold one called CBM Term. It actually comes with the penultimate cartridge, so if you happen to have the penultimate, it's here under utilities. Sorry, it's called Victerm. Uh, we can load Victerm, <coughs> and the Kim one will automatically detect baud rate. I forget what its max baud rate is, but I know it can go up to 2400. Or I think it can go up to 2400. We'll find out in a moment. Uh, duplex is full. Leave that. Parity, none. Stop bits. If you read the documentation, it says you need two stop bits. I have found, and you will find that it works fine with one. Uh, word length is eight. Um, next page, we want ASCII mode. Uh, I really don't like the implementation they did of 40 column mode, and that should be it. So if we go to terminal mode, it says terminal ready. If you press reset on the Kim 1, there you go. That's how the Kim greets you. Uh, what, what you'll see back from the Kim once it starts talking to you over the terminal is Kim, the address, and what's at that address. So for you to, say, go to 0200, type a space, that takes you to address 0200. It tells you there's a 32 there. If you wanted to change that, 00, zero press a period. Uh, if we go back to 0200 now, you'll notice it has been changed to 0. So this gives you a way to type and enter programs and run programs, and you actually get full terminal output, and you get a full keyboard for inputting it. So that's why you want to do this. And that's everything you need to do on a Commodore VIC-20 to talk to a Kim-1 single board computer. There's nothing more to it. If you want to do this on a Commodore 64 instead of a Commodore VIC-20, you need the exact same hardware setup. VIC-1011A, same cable, same Kim-1, same Corsham. What I will do differently is I'm going to use NovaTerm as my terminal emulation software on the Commodore 64. It works beautifully. I'm loading it off of an Ultimate 1541 Plus now. All right, it's loaded. Let's go to terminal mode. I already had this configured from before, so I should just need to press reset. And there's the Kim one talking to us, just like we expect. Nothing more to see here. 
that's all I have for you today. Now that you've seen how it works on a VIC-20 and a C64, it really works the same on anything with a serial port. Uh, you can do the same thing on a 128. Uh, I've used a CVM-25680. Uh, you can use it on a PC with a USB to serial cable. That There's nothing else you need to know. You have all the info you need. If you do have questions, just post them in the comments and I'll try to answer. Thank you.